Welcome once again, everyone, to Cannabis News. I'm your host, Joe Claire. It's February 5th, 2019, presented, as always, by the Marijuana Times. Check us out, marijuanatimes.org. Click the video tab to find this show. Today, we're talking about Nebraska's governor and his feelings on medical marijuana. Also, medical marijuana in Ohio, as the program slowly rolls out there, and new World Health Organization recommendations when it comes to the scheduling of cannabis. All of these things are coming right at you. But first, of course, I have to tell you that the cannabis news, trying something new. I, I, it was bad. Cannabis news is brought to you by NatureSide, nature-side.com and their organic, all natural pesticides. Check them out at nature-side.com site is spelled C-I-D-E. Grow safe and poison free. Don't use harmful chemicals on what you are growing. Be regulatory compliant in the state that you are growing in. Don't use banned pesticides. All of these things. I know it's a long list. It's fine. And take care of all of it with NatureSide. Nature-Side.com and the organic, all-natural pesticides. Thank you to them. This first story is by yours truly at MarijuanaTimes.org. Nebraska's governor opposes medical marijuana, even if it helped his own children. Basically, the crux uh, the nitty gritty, if you will, of this article is that this guy, this is a reporter from News Channel Nebraska, he's pressing the governor of Nebraska about his stance on medical marijuana and being against medical marijuana and seeing if that stance would waver any if uh, his children, Governor Ricketts in Nebraska, if the governor's children were in need or could benefit from medical marijuana, if that would change his mind. And he pressed the issue twice with the governor and Although he didn't answer outright no, he pretty much said the same thing both times, is that it's a public health issue and he has to look at the broader picture, heavily implying that he would, uh, it wouldn't matter if his kids would benefit from it because he thinks it's a public health hazard, so he would not be for legalizing medical marijuana. He said, I've sat down with the families and they're very sympathetic and I certainly understand where they're coming from with regard to a child. But we also have to remember, we have to protect the entire public. To protect the public safety, you really have to make sure it goes through the FDA process. That's the problem right there. That's not true. It's simply not true. Many safe, effective substances have not been approved by the FDA, but people use them every day to great effect. Many deadly, addictive substances that kill tens of thousands of people every year have been approved by the FDA. That is a false statement. That is a demonstrably false statement, quote, to protect the public safety, you really have to make sure it goes to the FDA process. No, you do not. He continues with, now, I know it's a long process, but that is what's happening, and we are getting those drugs. Uh, again, the reporter pressed him about his children. He said, again, we have to think about the broader issue of public safety here with regard to how we have drugs in our country. To make sure they're safe and effective, and what doses for what ailments, what side effects, and that's what the FDA process does. It's this notion that only the FDA can pronounce safe and effective medicine. When people use FDA medicines and they get killed, but they use medical marijuana and they don't die, they don't overdose, and they, millions of people in this country get great effect and have a better quality of life because of cannabis, and it's not FDA approved. So I don't know how you can look at these things and continue to just stubbornly say, no, it's not effective medicine unless it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the FDA. That is simply... Not true. And the FDA, we've put so much stock and so much trust in this FDA, the, the mythical, wonderful, glorious FDA process, that that's what leads to a lot of people to overdose. That's what leads a lot of people to get hooked on opioid medications in the first place. Oh, they're getting it from a doctor. Uh, it's legal. It's the FDA approved. So it must be safe. And then, oh, six months later, oh, you're hooked to a deadly narcotic. Sorry, it's FDA approved. I'm not sure what you did wrong, and I'm not sure what tens of thousands of other people did wrong to get addicted to it, but it's very safe and effective. I, I, you must have uh, screwed up your dosage or something because the FDA said it's just fine. It's just fine. It's safe. It's effective. You must have screwed up. I don't know what to tell you. That's basically what, what this boils down to. And I guess I'm supposed to commend, uh, I guess that's where I'm supposed to commend the governor of Nebraska, of Nebraska for for standing on principle and standing his ground, even if it involved his own children. He still stands on the principle that he's against medical marijuana. I don't know. Is that something that's commendable? I don't think so. I don't think so. Letting your ignorance not only doom your children, but everybody else's children. 
Not only does he think, no, my children shouldn't get it if it can help them. No one's children should get it if it helps them. No one. Think about that. Think about that. As Governor of Nebraska is saying, I don't think any child in Nebraska, if medical marijuana helps them, I don't think they should have access to it. I, I don't know. I don't know. I can't. I can't relate to that kind of thinking. I just, my brain just stops. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't follow the train of logic that gets me there. Which is good. I'm, I'm glad it doesn't. I don't want to be one of those people. It's like, nah, medical marijuana helps your kid. I don't care. I don't care. Screw your kid. I don't want to be that guy. I'm fine. I'm fine with who I am. I'll stick with that. This next story from DaytonDailyNews.com. Ohio's medical marijuana sales surpassed $300,000 and 46 pounds, that's during the first dozen days it's been legally for sale, according to the state's medical marijuana control program. Sales began January 16th at four dispensaries in Ohio. They're all up in, uh, basically in, in northern and northeast Ohio. There's supposed to be more down further south in the state coming soon. Uh, like nine dispensaries have provisional licenses, 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 to open in the Dayton region, including those in Butler, Clark, Green, Montgomery, and Warren counties. The nine are in various phases of planning and construction and will require final approval from the state. Uh, they go on to talk about the very high prices that, uh, that have come up initially in the Ohio Medical Marijuana Program, of course, because of restricted, uh, greatly restricted supply. And of course, the supply increases those prices uh, will come down. Supply comes up to meet demand, it will bring prices down. The slow rollout of medical marijuana in Ohio, uh, dispensaries are now selling only flour at this point. They still have to get the, the testing labs together and the manufacturing so they can license the manufacturing people and get them licensed so they can then make edibles and things like of that nature. So there you go in Ohio, very slow. But if you're an Ohio medical marijuana patient, you've, you've kind of gotten used to that. It's very slow. Like a molasses uh, running down the side of a house on a cold winter's day. That's right. That's right. That's my analogy. <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> this last story is from Forbes.com. World Health Organization recommends reclassifying marijuana under international treaties. You may remember a few months ago us talking about the World Health Organization uh, soliciting comments and such from uh, countries when it comes to uh, marijuana scheduling. Now, global health experts the United Nations are recommending that marijuana and its key components be formally rescheduled under international drug treaties. The World Health Organization, also for the cool kids called the WHO, is calling for whole plant marijuana as well as cannabis resin to be removed from Schedule 4, which for them is the most restrictive category of a 1961 drug convention signed by countries from around the world. The body also wants THC and its isomers uh, to be completely removed from a separate 1971 drug treaty and instead added to Schedule 1 of the 1961 convention. Um, marijuana and cannabis resin would also remain in Schedule 1 of the 1961 treaty. Uh, and it's different. On, on our system, Schedule 1 is the worst. Another system, and the 61 treaty, Schedule 4, is the worst. Uh, the WHO is also moving to make clear that CBD-focused preparations and cannabidiol uh, contain no more than 0.2% THC are, quote, not under international control, end quote, at all. It had previously been the case that CBD wasn't scheduled under the international conventions, but the new recommendation is to make that even more clear. So, I mean, I don't know what commentary needs to be out of that. The world is, is coming around, finally. It's taken a really, really long time, just really long for all of this to start unraveling for marijuana prohibition to start unraveling it took decades and decades and we were pulling the strings now and just all i can say is keep pulling keep pulling those strings keep unwinding keep undoing the sweater as the weezer song so aptly puts it i don't know i'm really i really failed at the analogy today i'm sorry i apologize to everyone out there watching and listening I, i'll try to do better I'll, I will. That's all I can promise. I'll try to do my best. What can I, what else can I do? Thanks for watching and listening and commenting on these videos. Thank you for checking out cannabis news. Uh, check out marijuana, the marijuana times, search the marijuana times on Apple podcasts for the audio only version 
of the show are also on YouTube and Vimeo as well as MarijuanaTimes.org. Thank you to NatureSide, Nature-Side.com, and their organic all-natural pesticides for sponsoring the show. Thank you all for watching and listening today, and we'll see you next time right here on Cannabis News. (laughs) 